Now, now even if I talk, I should never talk about this, and I'm doing so. That's my best way to That connect. is the highest oath you took. Right. In other words, that was the most sacred in, in this organization. Right. I want that you... That you would never tell this. Right. This here, what I'm telling you, what I'm exposing to you and the press and everybody, this is my doom. During the 1950s, Sicilian Mafia bodyguard Joseph Alaki changed the way the government and mafia worked with underground crime. Although during the 1950s, Sicilian mafias were known for creating chaos and destruction in the United States society, ultimately, Valaki put an end to some of the corruption, opening up a new frontier that involved working with high in profile criminals to dismantle a larger cinematic issue. He was the first person to take action and openly speak on the mafia's drug trafficking, as well as how the mafia works while giving this testimony to the U.S. Senate in Arkansas in the year 1956. Joseph Wallachy was one of the New York's biggest crime bosses at the time in 1920. He had his own gang known as the Momenta Gang. After working with them for a year, Joseph Wallachy had been caught in a robbery, resulting in him receiving a sentence of 18 months in prison, but he ended up only spending nine months on account of good behavior. After he served his time, he joined La Cosa Nostras, which was an Italian mafia filled with robbery, murder, drug trafficking, and various other crimes. During his work with the mafia, Balaki served time in La Casa Menstra War, which was a war that involved mafias fighting over territory all over the world until 1931 when the war ended. He later married his wife, Madrid Camila Balaki, in 1932 and not so long after, had his first son, Donald Balaki. After the war, Balaki returned to La Cosa Nostras as a bodyguard. After just 20 years of working for them, Balaki was charged yet again of being found with illegal drug narcotics. He ended up being guilty and receiving a 15-year sentence. While serving his time in prison, he murdered his embe, Beto Gavisi, a mafia boss for the Italians, by beating him with a metal pipe in his sleep. After the murder of his cellmate, Joseph Balaki was sent into investigation for the murder. Overall, it was all on the news and was known as the kiss of death, due to him stating that he kissed his cellmate on the forehead before his death, which escalated into a lot more problems. On September 27, 1963, Joseph Alaki was set in front of the U.S. Senate as he testified against not just himself, but the whole underground crime world and mafia. In his testimony, Alaki speaks on how the mafias work, he described the crimes being committed, and how just him saying the littlest bit of information could get him killed and or, as Alaki said himself, send him to his as doom. As soon as all mafias all over the world got word of Alaki and what he had just exposed, all mafias turned on each other and placed thousand dollar bounties on Alaki's head. His wife Madrid and son Donald Alaki even had to be put into the Winnish Protection Program for their own own safety. For civilians where they weren't afraid and weren't feeling as if their lives were being threatened. For at the time, that was a circumstance for most people. Mob bosses and gangs were at their peak and were causing crime and harm to people. This is why the government was so ecstatic when they found out this information and got to work. This event itself, as John F. Kennedy called it, one of the biggest breakthroughs in crime history at the time led to so much chaos and still has an effect on the world today. An ex-undercover narcotics detective determined if anything has changed and what someone in Valaki's situation would be put through today. Officer Cesar Cardenas, uh, I'm a police officer with the Police Department. Um, 
Have you ever experienced an event where a criminal was safer in jail? If you have, can you elaborate? Absolutely. Um, it happens all the time. You know, you get, uh, so in, in, in police work, um, our best, the best, the best information you can get is from a confidential informant. So basically what a confidential informant does is uh, there's somebody on the streets. Uh, they might be a gang member, an active gang member. They might be a dropout gang member. They can be a drug user. They can be, uh, it can be anybody who has information of specifically of the crimes that you are investigating. So a lot of times, um, say 50% of the time, somebody would come to us and say, hey, um, I saw the way you were talking to my friend. I kind of like the way you're, you're treating him like a human. You're not treating him. I want to talk to you. You know, can you can you take like ten minutes out of your day? So you take ten minutes out of your day. And you, you After we talked to Officer doing. Cardenas, um, we started to think about how this is about to happen. To anyone working in an organized crime and how dangerous the whole situation drugs. would be in general. You know, so the, those confidential As we think back to the last usually story, what they do is they tell us. He was the first you know, to have ever thought of doing this, and when you think about it. What was going on in Balaki's head that gave him the courage to risk his life for an event that made history? After everything had occurred with the trial, 117 members of La Cosa Nostra were tried for the underground trafficking, as well as the Sicilian Mafia's commission reform which occurred in 1971. During the same year, Joseph Balaki was serving his time in a Texas prison where he died of a heart attack at the age of 67. Later, the screenwriter of the name, Peter Mass, made the decision to write about Joseph Valaki. He gathered letters and public government documents in order to tell Valaki's story that would later be turned into a movie known as The Valaki Papers. That told a story and went into depth about how his life was affected by this event. Joseph Valaki died and made a name for himself as the first criminal informant in the Mafia as well as causing one of the biggest breakthroughs in crime history our frontiers changed how the government and law enforcement as a whole use criminals in order to solve or help the crimes that are being committed today as some may argue how could a criminal help solve crimes as we look back into the interview we have with officer cardenas you can see that it is a common thing used today Yes, Balaki was the first mafia person to ever do this and will be known forever as a snitch in the crime world, but will be known as a help to the U.S. government today. With him risking his life while also breaking one of the biggest oaths he had taken. If I talk, I should never talk about this, and I'm doing so. That's my best way to go. That is the highest oath you took. Right. In other words, that was the most sacred in, in this organization. Right. I want that you would never tell this. Right. This is... What I'm telling you, what I'm exposing to you and the press and everybody, this is my Noon, what set off this latest round of crime hearings by the Senate's Permanent Investigation Subcommittee was the existence of one Joseph Valachi, 60 years old, convicted dope peddler, convicted murderer, and one-time member of the Mafia, or Cosa Nostra, as its members call it in Italian, meaning our thing. More than a year ago, while serving time in the Atlanta Penitentiary, Valachi decided to talk, presumably to protect himself from a final retribution by the Mafia. Immediately, he was placed under an elaborately heavy federal guard, moved from one prison to another, all the while naming names, dates, and places. The Attorney General called it the biggest intelligence breakthrough yet in combating organized crime and racketeering in the U.S. Arrangements were made to bring Valachi before the Senate subcommittee to help the administration in its drive to get stiffer laws against organized crime. The hearings were opened this morning by the subcommittee chairman, Democrat John McClellan of Arkansas. 